right. Hello and welcome to the Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am delighted to be joined by Gordon and Jill Vigiano. Is that the correct pronunciation? Yep. Excellent. And, and where are you guys today? We're in the country? We're in Portland, Oregon. Portland, Oregon. Excellent. And I'm here in uh, lovely, sunny San Diego. And what we want to talk about today is we want to about talk about sales uh, and we want to talk about the challenges and maybe when you have to overcome things, maybe things aren't going well uh, and how you can pull together and recover and how a team is helpful for doing that. And uh, Gordon and Jill are going to provide some insights into that. And the reason why is because they have a very unique story. So if you would like to just maybe set the scene by um, briefly telling your unique story and why you have so much insight into help, into successful, you know, recovery, support, teamwork, all of that. So Gordon is a lifelong sales person, loved sales, started out in high school selling knives door to door, uh, got a marketing degree, mm -hmm. and then uh, and then owned his own business. He spent entrepreneurial sales was in his blood mm -hmm. his whole life. Um, and so, yes, I, I have the, the distinct pleasure of being the wife of an entrepreneur. I always liken it to, uh, you know, he would be on the roller coaster, you know, screaming with his hands in the air. And whereas I'm screaming, holding on and trying <laughs> to throw up. So <laughs> very, very different. Um, always very motivated. Gordon's always been very focused and uh, very, very disciplined when it came to sales. He was always well, first, he was almost always working. And then when he wasn't, he was reading books on sales. He was reading books on leadership. He was always trying to grow and learn and be better. Um, all this came to an abrupt and crashing end in 2008. Uh, Gordon suffered a massive stroke. Mm -hmm. One of those kind of struck by lightning events. Right. There's no reason for it to have happened. It just happened. Um, and it took away his, well, physically, it took his right side, but it really took his ability to organize his thoughts. Uh, it took away all of his language for a while. Um, and it just, his, so his cognition, his language, and his right side, all problematic after this mm -hmm. point. So, so it's been 11, it's been 11 and a half years now, um, and just a dramatic change in our lives uh, but uh, but the underlying foundation of sales in his life has served us um, even to this day. Yeah. So how was it? I mean, would you have and obviously I can't relate to it, but uh, except as, as somebody from the outside. But when you are faced with such a life changing and dramatic event such as that, it's obviously very tempting just to give up right and to just disappear into a dark hole and never come back out so what is it that that uh, gordon you and jill together and jill, you were able to do to actually turn this into something that's you know you now have a company you help people you speak and all of that how were you able to resist the temptation to just disappear into a black hole do you want to talk no no <laughs> i'm sorry well, i can't talk you know, interestingly, and in Gordon's case, sort of this blessing curse thing, mm -hmm. he was so disconnected from reality that he had no idea how bad off he was. Right. And my job as wife and caregiver, now we also had young kids at home. So right. crawling into a hole wasn't an option, mm -hmm. however tempting that might have been. Um, he was so disconnected that he, he thought he was fine. And I could see early on that that keeping him motivated and not squashing that and saying, let me tell you how bad you really are, right. keeping that motivation and working with it to try to help him, uh, that was something I had to do if I didn't want the whole house of cards coming down on mm -hmm. top of it. So, um, so yeah, so because he was so disconnected, it didn't occur to him that he wouldn't be... <laughs> Perfectly fine. So my job was to feed that and to help him work toward that. So when the time did come that he I may, mean, and this took years uh -huh. him to realize how bad he was, we were already well on our way in recovery. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a fascinating scenario if you think about it uh, in in other circumstances. And we were talking about sales or or maybe work in general. But sometimes, yeah, sometimes people don't know. 
uh, as you say, they, they don't know how bad they are. They don't know how badly things are going. They think they're going along okay. They think everything is 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 pretty much fine. And it takes somebody, as you say, you don't want to just come in and say, listen, I hate to tell you, but you actually, you know, suck at everything and you're doing horribly <laughs> because it's probably, it's not the greatest motivator, right? So how do you come in? So so talk to me a little bit. How do you approach a, a, a and obviously take a while, but how do you approach that where you have to kind of guide somebody towards reality, but you want to guide it to, them towards it in a way that has a positive outcome as, as, as uh, opposed to a soul crushing one? Well, one of the things that I, I knew about Gordon from day one is he was a goal setter. Mm -hmm. so I knew that goal setting was that spoke his language, whether he understood who he was or didn't. That was a language he knew. So we started early on setting goals. And at first they were just little goals. Uh, his first goal was to uh, call me on the phone. Oh. because he didn't recognize numbers anymore and he didn't remember how to use a phone. So um, the first time he practiced all day long trying to figure out how to dial and I had to write out the numbers for him so he could see. But at the end of the evening, he called me. Now he couldn't say anything because his language had been taken away, but I could hear him and I knew it was him and that he had accomplished his first goal. Um, and he was still in the hospital when that happens. Oh. So that was probably two or three weeks post stroke. So um, so, so I knew from the very beginning that goal setting was going to be important. So we started with little goals, little plans, little strategies, and we just built on those. And mm -hmm. one of the things that um, whenever we're out speaking and, and people have a chance to really ask questions, I always say, as, as we got moving, we started setting outrageous goals. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and we didn't hit a single one of them, but... It got us so much further than anyone thought we would get. Yeah, I, and I love that. And I love the fact that, that you started there about the idea, not just of setting goals, but then setting small goals to begin with. Because I think, and if you think in sales, and, and as you'd know, Gordon, like sometimes when somebody like starts a year and they have this big quota and they're like, okay, yeah. And maybe they calculate, I'm going to make all of this money if I do this commission. <laughs> But then, you know, a couple of months into it, you know, maybe they haven't sold that much and they're looking at it. And now it looks like a massive burden as opposed to a goal. And you have to just keep doing the simple things like putting, OK, I'm not going to hit my quota this month uh, you know, for the year, but I can do these things to bring me that little bit closer. So did you find that, that that's a really important strategy for somebody, even though you've got bigger goals that you have to keep incrementally moving forward? Yes, that was that was crucially important. And the other thing, and I and I kind of see the parallel in sales too, is we had to set time limits. Right. Or we would we started to burn ourselves out. You know, five hours a day of therapy was too much. Mm -hmm. You start you start becoming counterproductive, and you start to dread it. Uh, and so we 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 put together a plan that was two hours a day. And then we always gave ourselves a reward, which was maybe it might've just been going for a walk. It might've been getting a cup of coffee, but we had to make it something that didn't bring us down. Mm -hmm. We still took, you know, bite by bite by bite, went after our goals, but we had to be in a way that was sustainable. Um, and it was the same, you know, with, with sales, you can't burn yourself out in January if your goal is December. Mm -hmm. and, and I really like what you're just saying that there about um, about not burning yourself out and also reward. I spoke to somebody recently and I thought this was an interesting one because it was, he was talking about prospecting. Right. And he said um, that, you know, his goal, you know, he would sit down and maybe his goal was to make 30 or 50 prospecting calls and it was to get whatever, five appointments. He said at the end of the day, if he had made those 50 calls and he had really tried hard and maybe he hadn't made any appointments, he had he had one reward set up for himself if he made the five and he had a smaller reward if he didn't make the five, but he had given it his all. And and I like that idea of the fact that, you know, you do have to reward even these small steps to keep it a positive thing as long as you're not cheating yourself. Right. Right. <laughs> That's right. That has to be kept in limits, too. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, so, so, t so tell me about, uh, obviously, um, you're re re rebuilding your own lives and everything, but when, at what point did you decide that, you know, you need to take this out further and you need to take it outside of your own, you know, your own home and actually go out and start helping people? Four years. Probably about four years in. Um, mm -hmm. So, so at, w in the beginning, when we had no idea what we were up against, we thought Gordon would be fully recovered in one year. Wow. And, 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 you know, our community really banded together to help us. We had an amazing community support system going on. And, and we thought, well, at the end of the year, when we're fully recovered, we're going to have a big party for all these wonderful people. Well, the first year came and went and Gordon was in terrible shape. So we said, well, at two years, he'll be fully recovered and we'll have this big party. Well, at two years, he was in terrible shape. So after the third year, we thought, well, maybe we should just have the party because mm -hmm. this is clearly not going the way we thought it was going to go. Um, so, so Gordon said, you know, that's fine. Let's, let's have the party, but I want to talk about what happened. And so I spent, well, we spent six months along with another friend of ours, six months putting together this presentation that he gets called my brain has a hole in it. Mm -hmm. um, and that was great. But the problem is Gordon wanted to get this presentation, but he couldn't talk. So then he practiced every day for eight months until he could give the speech. Um, and so at the four year mark, we had a big party and Gordon gave the presentation and, and in true sales fashion, he put out an evaluation on every chair so people could give him a valuation. <laughs> That's <laughs> And everybody wrote, you need to tell this story more. Here's someone you should call. So they gave us all these people to call. So um, so he got 80 pointers and he got about 80 referrals. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. so, so, that, so it was nice because to have something so terrible happen, you can either sit with it and wallow in it, or you can try to turn it into something positive and go out with it. And so... That's how it happened. Yeah, it's fantastic. And just picking up on something that that you said there, I, and I think is is really critical as well, is that generally speaking, things take longer than we we initially predict or we would like, and that is the hard. And I think, and unfortunately, I think in today's culture it's even more pervasive because we live in a shortcut culture. We live in an instant culture, and people expect. But in general, you know, things take longer you know sales sometimes the sales cycle take longer business if you're an entrepreneur you think oh this time next year my business will take off well maybe it's going to take four years right um and i think that is the tough <laughs> that is the tough thing for for people to read and not to get disheartened but to look at the progress right yes and and i think that's really important is to be able to stop and look at the progress take that moment to stop and look back and um, I suppose that's why a lot of companies have like their big annual party is because even if it doesn't, even if everyone's working themselves to the bone, they can stop for a moment and say, look what we've done. And, and I know we have done that um, every year, especially on the anniversary. Look how far we've come. And, um, and you know, one of the things that was, I always felt was kind of stacked against us was that we were told by all medical professionals early on that you had one year, maybe two to recover. And what we really learned was that that and, and now the medical community doesn't really say that anymore because the, we've all learned that that's not true. As long as you're willing to try, recovery is possible. And how how similar is that to yeah. just growing a business? If you're willing to put in the effort, you at least have a chance. There's no guarantee, but you have a chance. The only time it ends is when you say I'm done. Right. And I, and I, and that's that's a critical point. So how much um, when you talk to people and stuff, how much do you, you know, emphasize that fact that you have to be, you're in recovery or in anything that it has to come down to the amount of effort you're prepared to put in yourself, right? Yeah, we have a we have a little video clip that we do. So so Gordon's hand was arm and hand work was paralyzed for the first four years, but we worked on it every single day for four years and mm -hmm. got no response. And then all of a sudden, at four years we got a flicker out of his finger. So oh. then it took four more years to open his hand. So for eight years, we worked on opening his right hand. So right there, that tells you a lot, right? Mm -hmm. So we did, we did these, uh, a couple of videos and there, we, you know, we try to keep things light and funny, sure. but so, so at four, at eight years, he tried to drink out of a cup. 
with his right hand. And, and of course, and he, and let go of the cup. That's very important. Mm -hmm. He, he could get the cup to his mouth and drink it, but you know, then he crunched it and it just crushes all over the place. But at the 10 year mark, we tried it again. Sure enough, same thing. He could get it up to his mouth, but he crushed it. But at 11 years, he did it. Wow. Six months ago, he actually picked up the cup, drank it, set it down. Now it was bent, but it was not. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. that says something. I mean, and I think that's just those funny little videos of him. Yeah all over himself it tells the story that it's all about trying and perseverance um and it may not be perfect but he did it yeah and i and i love that because i think that's such a profound and and very much needed message because I, as i said today i think unfortunately the culture of today is all about shortcuts it's all about instant it's all about to be honest if it's not if you don't instant gratification right if you're not getting a return immediately then you just give up and and move on so i think it's it's critically important that we have messages like this about you know things take time things take hard work but the rewards are phenomenal right yes Yes, it, it really is. And, and we laugh because it's so small. It's a paper cup. But, you know, it, it is a lesson in persistence and, and just that, that salesman in him that yeah. never gave up. So, yeah. Well, I'm glad you didn't practice on your Waterford crystal or anything like that. So. <laughs> Um, so, so tell me, um, what has been some of the, as you've gone out now and you've, you know, you've, you've spoken to people, what, what has the reaction been and what has, what has been some of the feedback that you've gotten about how people have reacted to your story and what, it, what impact it's made on them? Well, I think one of, one of the things that has impacted me the most is when we're done speaking nine times out of 10, a line of people form and and they come and they tell us their dark secrets. Mm -hmm. I think that there are a lot of people out there carrying around really heavy loads that they don't feel that they can allow anyone to know it or see it. And, and to find someone who's just putting it out there, this yeah. terrible mm -hmm. thing happened to us and yet look at us, we're still standing. Um, I think it gives them hope and it gives them sort of this moment of safe space where they really, they, Tell us, I mean, I, I can't believe some of the stories we have heard from people, um, really, really heavy things, but they either they feel like their career will be impacted if anyone knows, sure. maybe it's just too hard to talk about whatever. But um, men, women, it does not matter. I've had people walk up to me and just start crying and never tell me a single thing. Um, so I think the vulnerability and the willingness to share the struggle, I think it provides some freedom to people to say, I struggle too. Mm -hmm. And and I think that, yeah, I I really like that. And I think if we also just then, you know, bring it back to sales, I think sometimes it's hard for people to reach out to their manager or even their teammates and say, you know, I'm, I'm struggling. Like, I don't know, because I mean, Gordon, you're in sales long enough. You know um, that there are those moments when it's just not happening. You're, you, you think you're doing all the things that you, you, that you always did and you used to get results and it's just not happening. And sometimes you need somebody from the outside to take a look at what you're doing and say, actually, you're not really doing everything that you think you're doing, or maybe you want to try something different. But that's a hard thing for people to do. And I think sometimes for salespeople, it's even harder because they kind of, think that they're supposed to know everything and be that lone wolf right <laughs> <laughs> i think that's absolutely true and and yet being that brave person and hopefully it's an environment mm -hmm. where you can sure. say something but being that brave person you know i i'm sure if there's one person struggling there's probably more than one person struggling but it's getting that first person bravely to say i need help no absolutely well, we're coming up against the end of our time here and we could go on because this is a fascinating, fascinating conversation. But before we wrap up, I'd like you to tell people a little bit more about yourselves, how they can contact you and the types of things that you offer. So we have a website called mybrainllc.com. Uh -huh. um, Gordon manages the website. He does a great job. Um, and that's that's a great way to find us, to talk to talk to us. Um, I ended up writing a book about the experience. Mm -hmm. um, the book is called Painful Blessing. Yes. And um, that's also, you'll also see that on the website. Um, we do a lot of speaking around the country. 
um, a lot of times, you know, whether it's inspirational or just to in, you know, in, in sales types of organizations, mm-hmm. a lot of times in insurance organizations, because a huge part of our story is that we had disability insurance. Um, and not because we were so smart, but because we had an agent, a salesperson, who refused to take no for an answer. Mm-hmm. He changed our lives. Mm-hmm. So, um, so we do a lot of speaking about those kinds of things and, and really try to encourage people people to, you know, to really face their challenges and, and to bring in their team. So, so take a look at mybrainllc.com and, uh, and you'll find us there. Fantastic. Well, listen, uh, Gordon and Jill, this has been a fabulous conversation. Maybe you'll come back and talk to us again sometime soon, but, uh, Again, this has been great. I think a lot of takeaways for our viewers. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.